For more, let's bring in the man running against Governor Hochul, New York Congressman Lee Zeldin. Congressman, great to see you. Thank you for being here. I know you're very busy and you're going to be so great until November. Uh, is crime the number one issue for New Yorkers? Big time. And it's not just Republicans, independents, and Democrats. They want to feel safe on the streets. They want to feel safe in their homes, places of work, in the subway. Uh, they want to see law enforcement supported, DAs like Alvin Bragg fired, cashless bail repealed. It's certainly right up there at the top of the list. And they, they, they want to feel safe when they're running for governor, which is something that you were unable to do a couple of weeks ago when you were, when you were attacked. Uh, we've got the video of it for those who haven't seen, but I mean, he was attacked by a guy who looked to be kind of off his rocker, to say the least, a little swaying, or I don't know whether he was drunk or drugged up or not, but he had a, a weapon in his hand that could have done you massive damage, and he was out before 24 hours, right? That's right. Yeah, he was out in about six hours. And because I'm a member of Congress, you had the U.S. Attorney's Office able to get involved right away and rearrest him. But if I wasn't a member of Congress, this person would be out on the streets. And we're seeing these cashless bail stories uh, all over the state. Uh, we, we had someone earlier in July who two people, Mexican cartel drug smugglers, busted with a $1.2 in crystal meth, uh, and they were instantly released back out on the streets because of cashless bail. Hmm. We all saw the fight last week between the 16-year-old and the NYPD officer. That 16-year-old was just released a few days earlier after a violent robbery. He's trying to jump a turnstile, with which, Mayor, uh, which Al Alvin Bragg is saying is now okay. The officer tries to stop him, gets into a fight. You know, at the end of all of that, that 16-year-old went in front of the judge and asked if he could press charges against the officer and oh by the way the 16 year old immediately got released back out on the street um, by the way that you could see i don't know if we have the video but you could see the officer doing his damnedest to prevent injury while he was being attacked this this kid was using every ounce of energy he had uh, to try to attack the officer uh, it was just it was just horrible to see and to see him put in that example another example is so many to choose from, unfortunately, but the cover in the New York Post focused on 10 individuals, career criminals, uh, who had 500 arrests since the New York bail reform began. Not, uh, 945 days, 485 crimes for 10 people, and most of them are still out in the streets. I mean, I, it shows you how absolutely ridiculous this, this bail law is. Yeah, you're right, 500. And Kathy Hochul says, in response to calls for a repeal, that there's no data supporting the call for repealing cashless bail. Well, there's some more data for you. And with these crimes that are being committed, they often have victims. You know, if you're, if you're the family of 93-year-old Connie Torrey in Syracuse, you're, you lost a loved one because someone released on cashless bail murdered Connie Torrey. Someone else released on cashless bail for an arson, rearrested for a double manslaughter in Yonkers. These are all... Uh, statistics. She could, you know, Kathy Hochul could count up the amount of press clippings yeah. on her desk and call that the data. The New York City Mayor Eric Adams says, let's have a special session. Let's overhaul cashless bail today. I agree with that call. That should get done today. Kathy Hochul says the data doesn't support it. Well, more than that, she, she says it's successful. She says the data proves that the reforms are successful. She said it in a New York Daily News uh, editorial a couple of months ago. I'll, we can put up on the screen. The reforms were successful. Fewer New Yorkers are kept behind bars just because they can't pay, and we've saved taxpayer dollars in the process. I mean, that's her excuse for keeping this thing going. Yeah, and on top of the need to overhaul cashless bail, you have DAs like Alvin Bragg refusing to enforce the law. Kathy Hochul says, cut Bragg some slack. He just got there. He's doing his job. Uh, when the Jose Alba case was taking place, and I was standing in front of the district attorney's office calling for that murder charge to be dropped, Hochul was asked about it. She said, it's none of her business. It's a local issue. She's not going to get involved. If yeah. you want to sit in that governor's seat and you want to lead, you have a duty to keep the people safe. And if you don't want to do that then move along and let somebody else do that job and lead. By the way, she has the power as governor to fire that Soros-supported uh, district attorney. She's not doing it. Uh, I, I don't think she's particularly been asked to do it by the mayor, but it's clear that he's going in that direction. Would you fire Mr. Brad? Day one. That's the first thing that I would do after taking the oath 
is turning to the Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg to let him know that he is being fired. Kathy Hochul, by the way, isn't just refusing to remove Alvin Bragg. She won't even criticize him. That's what we got to this point where you're pandering to a pro-criminal aspect of your own party, your own base, where she's so boxed in, where she's taking on the Working Families Party support. She's running on that line, and she's refusing to criticize Bragg at all. Right. Now, a more tricky issue uh, is, is the homeless crisis in New York, which has gotten totally out of control. It was cleaned up once by Mayor Giuliani, began to slip a little with Bloomberg, and then it went down the tubes. Uh, with de Blasio. Uh, it's, it's a very sensitive issue because a lot of these people have serious mental health issues. They're drug addicted. They have alcohol problems. What Giuliani did was he sent out a policeman with a social worker and said, look, you can go with a social worker. He can get you food, a place to stay, a job. He can clean up your, your habit if you've got one. Uh, but if you refuse to do that, you can't stay here. And that's when the police will take you to jail. Is something like that still possible to do? Because it worked back in the 90s with Giuliani. It's essential. And what I have learned in my conversations with mental health professionals who have been focused on this, they say that it's just really important to be able to listen to these people. A lot of individuals who are homeless on the street are actually doing it by personal choice. As you point out, there are mental health challenges and they, they need assistance. There needs to be more affordable housing. You need to help people with one person might be a drug addiction case. Another one, it might be alcohol abuse. You can't paint this all yeah. with one broad brush. And you can't just say that adding a new shelter, putting someone inside of a shelter, you could just wash your hands, right. you know, high five each other, declare it a success and move along. There's more to it. Yeah, they're sure. It's not humanitarian. Uh, finally, on taxes, uh, New York is one of the highest tax state in the country. Uh, many businesses are leaving, particularly because of that, also because of crime. But taxes are a part of it. The tax base is drying up. New York's going to run out of money. What do you propose to do about that? Yeah, well, we have to bring spending under control. You've seen tens of billions of dollars added to annual spending. Uh, we just saw yesterday the quarterly report issued by Governor Hochul. Uh, talking re a revision of the state's finances downward, where now they're projecting huge deficits. The state is heading in the wrong direction. We not need to bring spending under control. We need to cut taxes across the board. We need to get rid of the estate tax. We need to overturn the state's ban on the safe extraction of natural gas, approve new pipelines. There's so much opportunity to improve the business climate in this state. And while you have politicians like AOC and others preventing Amazon to come with their 25,000 good paying jobs into Queens. There's a whole culture change that has to be made to reopen New York for business. It's something that has to happen on day one. It's not happening right now with one party democratic rule. They feel like they're not spending enough, that they're not taxing enough. Un unbelievable. Uh, Congressman, you got a long way to go with a short period of time, but uh, you've made amazing progress so far. Good luck to you. We appreciate you coming in here.